If you're handling snakes and drinking poison because of a verse you read in the Judeo-Christian Bible, you need to stop immediately and hear us out. Mark 16, 18 isn't what you think it is. The latest news, history, and analysis from the perspective of the first Christians. Tune into the FBN Worldwide 24-7 radio stream. Here at FBN, we've done innumerable episodes comparing the four anonymously authored Gospels of the modern Judeo-Christian Bible with the original Gospel of the Lord as found in the first Christian Bible of 144 AD. In fact, last week we did a comparative analysis of the last paragraphs of all of the Gospels to see what the last words of Jesus were to his apostles before ascending to heaven again after his resurrection. And all of the Judeo-Christian King James-style Gospels had Jesus saying different words and giving different instructions and even being in different places during his final visit with the apostles. In fact, no two were alike. Now, given that these anonymous gospel authors of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John never met Jesus and, at best, were getting their stories second and third hand, it's the best we can hope for, I suppose. But a verse in the last paragraph of Mark caught the attention of an alert FBN viewer who took the time to write First News, uh, an email, and he asked about it. Let's pull it out here and have a look-see. He says, is this an example of trickery being woven into the New Testament at Mark 16, 18? They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. He continues, seems like a you can drink bleach and be okay line, or extrapolating that to take the jab, you'll be fine, unquote. Now, there's a lot to unpack there, but let's tackle the verse and scripture first. Now, what do we know exactly of Mark? Well, like the other three gospel authors in the Judeo-Christian Bible, he's anonymous. But let's say he's the same Mark that traveled with the Apostle Paul. Now, Luke also traveled with Paul, and neither Mark nor Luke ever met Jesus. And after traveling with Paul and seeing his Gospel of the Lord, both Mark and Luke wrote a Gospel. Now, that's not a coincidence. In Mark and Luke, you can see where they plagiarize the original. It's an obvious copy-paste job in many sections. Now, that's going to bring us back to Mark's verse about snakes and drinking poison. Let's look at the original verse as we read it in the Gospel of the Lord so we can get a better idea of what Mark copied and edited. Quote, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. Behold, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in the heavens, unquote. Now, first of all, Jesus is talking to his apostles and giving them specific instructions as they travel from town to town. And as we read, they do things in his name. He's not telling somebody in a trailer park to do a floor gymnastics routine with the deadly rattlesnakes while talking about Yeshua and Yehovah and other names that are found nowhere in the New Testament. Remember, in his name, in the name of Jesus only. Now, what else did he say? Tread on serpents. Now, that's a lot different from handling serpents, as we read in Mark. He's telling them, don't worry about accidentally stepping on snakes and scorpions as you do my work in my name. See, you'll be protected. He didn't tell them to do a magic act at a carnival and impress the crowds by juggling deadly snakes. That's the height of stupidity, and there's a lot of dead people over the last 2,000 years because they did it. That's what happens when you read false gospels written by false brethren. When you follow the Judaizers, you end up dead. Now, Jesus also tells the apostles in the original gospel, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But whoever this Mark is decides he can write, quote, 
and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, unquote. Now, how many people have died pulling this stunt over the last 2,000 years? A lot more than you want to know, buddy. You see, this is the way of the Judaizers. Back then, they were known as Ebionites, and they spent hundreds of years perverting the gospel and Judaizing it. Most of what they did causes spiritual damage and corrupts Christians. They even conned the church into saying that you had to be circumcised to get into heaven. Now, thankfully, much of that nonsense was dumped into the theological trash bin at the Council of Jerusalem in 48 AD, but not nearly enough of it. You see, on one hand, we have the spiritual damage, but on the other, with Mark, we have what can only be called suicide instructions. He deliberately edited the original verse and killed countless Christians with that irresponsible nonsense. Let me give you an example. If you're a parent and you tell your kids to go in the backyard and play with rattlesnakes and drink some bleach, what do you think is going to happen to them? And to you for doing such a thing? Well, this is what Mark did to the children of God. It's an abomination, plain and simple. And it's made even worse, as if it were possible, made even worse by the fact that Mark claims these were Jesus' last words before he ascended to heaven. It's unconscionable, and it's criminal. But you don't have to remain a victim, a dupe, a mark. Put the rattlesnakes and bleach down and pick up a copy of the original Christian Bible of 144 AD. And remember, God's chosen people are baptized Christians. That's your birthright, and nobody can take it from you. You can go to the veryfirstbible.org.org and get a free copy. And if you have a question or idea for a new episode, drop us a line. I'll have a link in the show notes. Speaking of which, and I really don't mention it enough, we broadcast around the world on the FBN radio stream. You can find that by going to firstbiblenetwork.com and click on the Listen Live button. And by the way, from time to time, I click on the, we have like a little analytics uh, section or area where we can see which countries are tuning in. And um, I'm pleased to report that we have our first listener from Fiji, specifically Suva, Fiji. And I think that's where my kava comes from. So that's an important market for us. Coffee and kava have to have it. May God's Holy Spirit find and guide you. I'm Darren Kalama, and this is First News on FBN. Kill them all, old and young, girls and women, and little children. Does that sound like something Jesus would ever say to you? The first Christians didn't think so either. And that's why you won't find the Old Testament in the first Christian Bible of 144 AD. Reconnect with your pre-Nicene Christian roots and the Bible you were meant to have. 10 books and the gospel of the Lord. Download your free ebook at theveryfirstbible.org.